Hello and welcome to another Royal Reviewer live pop-up chat. Today is the 2nd of April 2020. Hello, how are all of you doing? As always, this is a live chat, so in a moment I will go and find the live chat room and see who's dropping in. But we have some news to talk about today. We are going to be talking about Queen Elizabeth, who has fought the council, she's had a battle with the council, um, of <laughs> her, her local Balmoral Council, um, and she has won. She has won the application to build, to go hydroelectric. So we'll be talking about that and what that means for Balmoral. Also, William and Catherine have been doing their bit by the telephone to support frontline services. And we'll be taking a look at some of the lesser members of the royal family with their Instagram posts. So hello and welcome to today's show. Without further ado, I am going to go and find the chat room and see who is dropping in today. So, um, by the way, we now have over 100 channel members. We have 104 channel members. So hello to all of you guys who, whose names are appearing in the live chat in green. I can see Joanne, I can see Reverend Darlene, I can see Betsy and Cassie, uh, Sharona and Tammy. Hello to you all and anyone else who is just dropping in. No tiara, I forgot to wear my tiara today. It's upstairs. So I'm afraid we are going to have to be tiara-less today. Um, yeah, so hello, I can see lots of greetings, hello to you all. Right, the first piece of news I want to speak, to speak about today is the Queen's long-desired plan to make Balmoral self-sufficient. So, the Queen, I think it was back round about 2011, round about then, I seem to remember, without checking, the Queen installed something similar um, at Windsor Castle and I think it was hydroelectric or it was some kind of um, heat source pump. Anyway, its its intention was to make, was to generate electricity, power for electricity. So, you know, as we know with any kind of big, large estate, they cost an awful lot of money to run um, and you know, usually these big landowners with these big country houses have to make them pay. They either rent them out for wedding venues or um, film locations, uh, hotels they can turn them into. They can use the grounds for, um, for, you know, I don't know, concerts, that kind of thing. Um, but the Queen obviously can't do that. She's not going to hire out Balmoral for, um, for weddings and, and that kind of thing. So, although they do have people come to stay, they do rent out the cottages. So you can actually go and stay at some of the cottages of Balmoral. But um, also, they want to be self-sufficient with regards to the environment. I can see a lot of perhaps Prince Charles's idea ideas behind this. So, the Queen has won a battle against environmentalists to build a hydroelectric turbine at Balmoral. Now, that in itself, that sentence in itself, seems to be a little bit contradictory to me because if you are an environmentalist, then I would imagine that you would probably be in favour of, of generating renewable energy. Um, so I'm not entirely sure why environmentalists oppose it. Um, I think... I think it has something to do with the amount of noise that it could potentially generate. Uh, but just like with wind turbines and all kinds of things, there is going to be a little bit of noise if you want to go green. So Her Majesty wanted to build a two megawatt generator on the River Muick, which runs through her 50,000 acre Balmoral estate in Scotland. Uh, but she was battled and opposed by environmentalists. Now this 50,000 um, no, th this, what was the wattage again? Um, oh, I didn't say. Um, but yeah, this hydroelectric pump was set to generate, well, it is going to generate when it's built, £650,000 worth of energy, electricity per year. Oh, that's it, two megawatt. The two megawatts is going to generate £650,000 worth of energy, which, um, which people are estimating would make 
Balmoral self-sufficient, which I think would be a really, really amazing feat to do. Uh, and perhaps we should always try to harness um, what renewable energies we have going forward. So I kind of, I applaud the Queen and Prince Charles for doing that. Um, any surplus electricity is planned to be sold onto the national grid, uh, which means it goes back into circulation for other people to use, although obviously uh, other people will have to pay for that energy. Uh, the plans were opposed by, by environmentalists who feared it would be too noisy for woodland creatures living nearby, such as badgers, otters, voles, red grouse, black grouse and snow bunting. However, like I say, we have to make the, you know, the balance between, I suppose, renewable energy use going forwards in the future and such issues and concerns like this. However, um, the local council has ruled in the Queen's favour. So the Queen gets to build her new hydroelectric turbine at Balmoral. I have no idea how long they take um, to build and construct and be installed, but you know, within probably the next couple of years, Balmoral will be self-sufficient, thanks to the Queen, and my thinking is probably Prince Charles slightly behind this as well. Um, right, let's have a look what people are saying. Um, let's go, let's go up a little bit. Um, April says, I wonder what taxpayers will say about Queen Elizabeth II. Meghan and Harry renovated Frogmore and made it sustainable. Frogmore was a slightly different uh, issue. It didn't have its own um, electrical substation. So they had to install at great cost an electricity substation. Now, I'm not sure whether that is part of the paying back um, portion of it. Because um, obviously Harry and Meghan have agreed um, or offered to pay back um, what the costs were, but <clears throat> I'm not sure if that's going to cover all of, for example, the major infrastructure, because obviously now, let, let's say Harry and Meghan decided that they didn't want to live at Frogmore anymore, having paid it back, um, that cottage could potentially be rented or given to someone else. So I'm not quite sure in terms of um, the infrastructure parts, such as the um, electric, the electrical substation, that kind of thing. I mean, obviously, you know, fixtures, fittings, which they paid for anyway, um, you know, maybe a cost towards it. We don't actually know how much Harry and Meghan have agreed to pay back. Um, but the one thing is we will find out because there will be a reimbursement um, put in there with regards to the accounts, the next time the accounts are the accounts are revealed, so we will find out roughly. Roughly, we know how much it cost. We will find out how much they pay back, whether it's all of it or not. So um, probably not best to speculate on it, but we will find out how much has been paid back. Let's go up a little bit and see what people, what other people are saying. Sandra says you look skinny. Thank you. Um, no, it's not silk, although it does have a slight sheen to it. Um, oh, Tammy stayed at Balmoral. Yes, you can stay at Balmoral. There are cottages, holiday cottages to rent, uh, but they are booked. I looked for, well, obviously they're all shut now because of what's going on, um, but they were booked up the last time I checked. Um... Miriam says hydroelectricity or wind generated electricity. I thought that was green. Well, it, it is green. <laughs> it is green. Um, right. Let's go down and see what people are seeing. Um, Tony says, good morning from Seattle. My thoughts are with you and my family um, at these crazy times. My thoughts go to everyone at the, this, and they are crazy times. Uh, yes, Andrew Parker Bowles, um, Camilla's ex-husband, does have the thing that's going around. He does. Uh, right, I'm going to go down slightly. Becky says, Frogmore obviously would be a great place for Princess Eugenie and husband with the new baby. Princess Eugenie does have um, a property at 
well, it, it's not hers. Um, it was, she, she, she rents it. Um, it's, it's within the Kensington Palace complex. It's not too far um, away uh, from where Harry and Meghan used to live at Nottingham Cottage. It's on that same, that same complex. And it's called Ivy Cottage. And um, she lives there, but she pays rent. Um, as does Princess Beatrice um, in the St James's Palace apartment um, that she has there. Um, mm -mm. Let's read down. Um, right, I'm going to leave that now because basically it is what it is. And then I'm, as soon as we hear any more about um, when that hydroelectric pump is being built, uh, if indeed we do ever find out, I will let you know. But there is one already or something similar, whether it's thermal. It might be geothermal, maybe, but they've got something similar at Windsor Castle as well. Um, right, next piece of news is William and Catherine. They have been, uh, let me just go to where it was where I, I saw it. Um, they have been via telephone communicating with frontline services, including hospitals. So we saw on March the 29th, there was a post <clears throat> about the Duke and Duchess being in regular contact with organisations and patronages to understand the issues they are facing during our difficult time that has continued so how we knew about this they haven't posted about these telephone calls on um these new these latest telephone calls on their um Kens kensington royal instagram or kensington palace um twitter accounts so that, that they haven't posted about these but we we know about them because all official engagements are recorded in the court circular so the court circular um clearly stated that Prince William and Catherine had been um, making telephone conversations to hospitals, showing their support, how they can whilst being in isolation. Uh, the two NHS hospitals that have been contacted are um, the University Hospital Monklands in Scotland and the Queen's Hospital Burton in the Midlands. And that happened on Wednesday afternoon. Um, like I say, the royals have been doing what they can, however they can, video link, um, telephone calls, um, and yeah, I mean, I'm sure any kind of contact will make the National Health Service staff feel like they are being um, valued, thought about, um, and, and noticed in this, in this very, very difficult time. Uh, those calls, of course, will have been made from their Anma, Anma home in Norfolk. I can't get my words out today. Uh, but yes, the court circular listed these engagements. Um, and of course, this comes after Prince Charles delivered his message from Burke Hall in Scotland, of course, where he spoke about everything that's going on in the world right now. Um, and I think any kind of help, wherever, wherever it can come from and in however, whatever form it can come in, is always going to be appreciated by our frontline services. And I'm really, really glad um, that William and Catherine have been able to do that. Um, Tim says, I was sad to see that Trooping the Colour has been cancelled. They, I think they're looking at doing something, but it won't be the traditional Trooping the Colour that we know. They did say they are looking for alternatives. What to mark the, the occasion? I don't know what that will be, but in its traditional form, yes, it's it will not be going ahead. Um, right, let's just go up and see what people are saying. Um, Reverend Darlene says, Harry and Meghan are the only ones that receive a wedding present of Frogmore but have to pay rent. In terms of it being a wedding present, these types of accommodation are given, it's called grace and favour homes, and they are usually given upon marriage to senior working royals. So this was given um, in the guise of a wedding present, but it was because of them being senior working royals. That is how they got it. Um, Prince and Princess Michael of Kent at one point were working royals, were, were doing engagements, for the monarchy, on behalf of the monarchy. 
Um, and for years and years and years, they didn't pay rent. They had what we call a grace and favour home at Kensington Palace. Then, ooh, I don't know, it was about 10 years ago, um, it was it was declared that they would start paying rent because they were no longer performing any such royal duties. So um, you are entitled to a grace and favour home if you perform duties on behalf of the Queen. Beatrice, usually have to pay rent. Um, Prince and Princess Michael of Kent that used to have a grace and favour home don't anymore. Harry and Meghan's Frogmore Cottage was given for their wedding um, as somewhere to live, but it was because on the basis of them being senior royals, which of course, when they stepped back as being senior royals, that came into question and they offered to pay rent on it and pay back the money as well. Um, and like I said earlier, we don't know how much um, money they'll be paying back, but, or even if they have at the moment actually paid it back, but that will be revealed. So we will have to wait and see how much has been paid back once the accounts are published for for um, for the last financial year, although if they if they make the contributions into the new financial year, it might not be until next year when the accounts, the next lot of accounts, um, are are published before we actually find out the true cost. But yes, it's classed as a grace and favour homes, and they go to. Um, senior working royals and of course at the moment Harry and Meghan are not senior working royals um, you could say Royal Lodge where Andrew and Sarah the York home that is also a grace and favour home now Prince Andrew is a different case again because he has been forced to step back he hasn't voluntarily stepped back uh, but if things continue the way that they have um, and if the resolution to the Prince Andrew situation is disfavourable to him and he he permanently has to step back from royal duties or is required to step back from royal duties, there would also be a case for him to um, start paying rent on Royal Lodge Windsor as well. Um, and that is something uh, that I would support if indeed he, he could no longer return uh, to royal duties having there having been some kind of resolution which would force him not to so there is that issue as well and in 2020 we have a lot going on but i do definitely think we will probably see some kind of conclusion to the prince andrew situation whichever way it be so um so yeah we again that is something that we need to wait and see um, Christine says, do I think when Charles becomes king, he will address the nation more often than the Queen? Um, that's a tricky one because each monarch is different and how each monarch decides to communicate with the nation has been different. We have seen progressions. Um, now, with obviously uh, our Queen Elizabeth II at the moment, she has kind of, you know, stayed with stayed with the time, she does her, her yearly Christmas address. Whenever anything major happens where she has been required to, to make a, a public address, she has, like, for example, um, the death of Diana, the death of, her, her death of her own mother, which was the last time that she officially addressed the, addressed the nation outside of the traditional Christmas broadcast. Um, whether Charles will do it, I do, personally, I don't think he will. I think he will keep it pretty much to the Christmas message. And then if anything major happens, um, he will probably address the nation um, about his own mother's death when that happens. Um, do I know where Princess Beatrice will live after her marriage? No, uh, there have been no announcements made about that. Um, however, there is still the possibility of apartment one. If you remember, um, apartment one is the the quite big, substantial apartment right next door to where William and Catherine live. Now, that um, the, I, yes, it's it's the Kents that live there. Now, they did actually. It transpired that they did. No, is it the Gloucesters? I think it's it's the Gloucesters. The Gloucesters, I think, did actually offer to vacate that property for Meghan and Harry at the time when they were looking for a house. 
Meghan and Harry didn't want to didn't want to live there. They chose Frogmore Cottage instead. Um, so apartment one was actually probably going to be a much cheaper option than Frogmore Cottage. Frogmore Cottage took a lot of money, as we found out, to to turn back these kind of this one property that that once was one property that was divided into five separate units to put it back together. So Harry and Meghan could have had a much cheaper option of going into apartment one. They didn't choose to take that. They chose Frogmore Cottage. Um, so there is also the option that maybe the Gloucesters could volunteer that apartment for Princess Beatrice, maybe. So um, so no, I think Beatrice will carry on with her, her apartments at St James's Palace for now. Um, of course, they are, of course, independently wealthy as well, the Mapelli Mozzies, so perhaps they could buy their own accommodation in London as well. But, like I say, there is the option, maybe, potentially, of the Gloucesters Apartment 1 um, becoming available, being offered for them, potentially, at some point. Again, we wait, we wait to be seen, but that is an option. Uh, Princess Beatrice's wedding is cancelled. Um, poor Beatrice. Um, she has really been through it with with everything with the wedding. But yeah, um, no, it's not going ahead as it was planned. Um, it's not going ahead at all, we believe. Um, because obviously with the measures that are in place at the moment, the Church of England is only allowing, I think, five people at a wedding, which is the priest, the bride, the groom... Um, and two witnesses. So, only five people at your wedding? I mean, no, <laughs> no, that, that, that is, there's, re there's reduced, and then there's like five people. Um, no, I would most definitely cancel, and I, and she has. Let's go up and see what people are saying. Uh, Maureen, have they repaid Frogmore repairs yet? We don't know. Um, they they offered to do so, uh, but we won't know until the accounts are revealed. And I'm sure the media will be all over it, picking over the accounts, finding um, how much they have paid back. But we've got to wait for that. Um, Miriam says, it's like having a uh, room and board as part of your compensation, media and bloggers should stop using the word gift. Um, I would I would go with what I said earlier. It's more of a grace and favour home. It was given because of their position as senior royals, um, and it was given on the occasion of their wedding. Um, the Queen, the um, the royal estates, the crown estates still own it. You you can't give it. Um, it was it was given for their use as a wedding gift because of the position they were as senior royals, as a grace and favour home. Um, so if you catch my drift, when they have stepped back from that, that's when all of this came into question and they made their offer um, to make repayments on it. But we don't know in terms of like exactly what. I mean, you know, for example, I made um, a case about this, about the um, electrical substation. You know, those properties would always have needed having at some point, if not when it was done, but at some point in the future, they would have needed to have had um, that done as part of the work. Um, you know, perhaps there will be some exceptions, some, some, some costs taken out maybe that they won't have to pay for. Uh, right, I'm going to scroll down. Uh, Stephanie D. Kelly says it would be great if the royal grandchildren could become working royals whilst their spouses could maintain their independence. Um, that could most certainly happen. It's happened in the case of Princess Anne. Um, you know, Princess Anne is a full time working royal. Sir Timothy Lawrence has, you know, his own independent earnings, um, but not high profile. They aren't high profile earnings. Um, Stephanie says Princess Beatrice deserves a gorgeous wedding after... Oh, she does. She, she most certainly does. Um, Prince Charles is out of quarantine, but because of his age, they are required to... The, well, well, not required. The government advises that people over the age of 70 do 
stay in the house as much as possible because they're classed as being vulnerable people. Um, yeah, there's a difference between a smaller wedding and only having two witnesses. Yes, um, and that is why it's been cancelled. Um, right, I'm going to move on, I think, to um, the Instagram post which I was speaking about. So, let me just kind of find them because I have about a million different windows open today. Um, Sarah Ferguson has been posting on Instagram um, and she posted, thank you so much to a particular company for your very generous donation to NHS Glandin. Always a lady of her heart. So, um... She's tweeted because um, a company has donated lots of antibacterial hand wash. Uh, so if you go to Sarah's account, you'll be able to see those. I'm not going to share the links because they are just little tiny posts. There isn't anything major, but there are um, lots and lots and lots of hand cream and hand gels and all that kind of thing that has been donated. Also, um, what I think was actually quite funny. Now, actually, I will share the link to this because it is quite funny. Uh, Mike Tyndall always likes a bit of a laugh, doesn't he? So, as we know, um, parents across the land are having to look after their children at home and educate them whilst all of this is going on. And Mike Tyndall shared this quite, you know, humorous post saying, uh, First homeschooling week done, but let's try and keep it lean. 89 calories, stay safe and have a great weekend at home, please. And he shares a picture of the cider that, no, lager that he's drinking and it's called Skinny. So there we go. Mike Tyndall trying to be skinny and maybe possibly pr promoting a product as well. I don't know. But I just thought that little bit of, of humour um, was quite funny. Um, right. Oh, do you know what? I haven't got my chat set on uh, live chat today. Oh, and who else needs a haircut? Who else can't get their hair done and is in desperate need of a haircut? Do you know what? I'm going to be like a caveman by the time everything's back to normal. I really do need a haircut, my goodness. Uh, yeah, Royal Ascot at the moment is not going ahead. The Queen will not be happy. Um... Southern Bell says, I saw that with his beer. <laughs> yes. And Mike Tyndall likes, likes to have a little bit of a drinkies. Uh, Patron the King says, as long as they don't make Her Majesty go up the turbine to fix it. I wouldn't put it past that. Oh, definitely not. Can you imagine? Well, at least Angela Kelly will have weighted down her hem, uh, her hem line, just in case a big gust of wind should come and, heaven forbid, give the Queen a Marilyn moment. Can you imagine? Um, Susan Orr says, I'm beginning to look a bit woolly too, and we'll have terminal bed head before long. Oh, me in the morning, my goodness, it's like, oh, it's like, I don't know what it's like. Seriously. Um, Elgie Poodle has scary roots showing. Uh, Maureen needs her mani and pedi so bad. Um, Knessa says, my face is very red. Oh, it's the lighting. I bet if I turn off the light over there, it'll be, um... And let me just turn off the light to show you that I'm not red. Uh, there we go. Better? Are we less red now? Um, HM the King says, The Queen will never have a Marilyn moment with Angela by her side. No, she most certainly will not. Um, Sharona says, My hair is past my curls now. Oh my goodness. Wow. Yeah, no Wimbledon either. So Catherine, obviously a big fan of Wimbledon, won't be there as well. Um, oh, Stephanie Ador is wearing a hair turban. Wow. Do you know what? Maybe I should start wearing those. Um, Leslie says, we will all celebrate our beautiful natural selves. Um, as long as we're controlling hair in other areas. You know what I'm saying. Because we do not want the shrubbery to overgrow. Do we now? No, we do not. Mm. Um, Live, Love and Laugh says, I have short hair and wear wigs occasionally, so I'm good. 
Oh, I think we're all going to have to be wearing wigs at some point. Uh, no, I forgot my tiara today. My goodness. Um, Christine says, we can all wear a scarf like the Queen. We can indeed. Um, <laughs> people, right, okay, I'm going to go now. I have spoken about everything that I wanted to speak about today. Um, for all the patrons of Patreon, I am doing a patrons-only chat tonight at 7pm GMT. I have already sent out the link to that to all the patrons. So um, check your messages on Patreon or your emails if you're subscribing. The link should be there. Um, ooh, I, ooh, I saw a quick question. Uh, Stephanie A. Drury says, if Beatrice becomes a senior royal, what happens to her husband? He remains, he remains uh, Mr. Mapelli Mozzi um, and doesn't acquire any status. Leslie says, the shrubbery can be handled. Well, well, I mean, I've, yes. No unsightly shrubbery. It's spring, people. We need to keep your gardens tidy in the spring. Um, Carolyn thinks that hats will come back into fashion. And Angelic says, have a great day and stay safe. Thank you. I will not, never, I will never, ever be sporting a man bun. You take those words back. A man bun indeed. Seriously. Although I did like the one Serena Williams had. Do you remember when she had her cup of tea and she was... I did like that one to be fair. Maybe I could find just a clip in. Yeah, maybe I could have a clip in bun. Um... <laughs> Right, I'm going, I'm going. So, if you've enjoyed this video, please give it a big old thumbs up. Don't forget to share on social media and also do hit the bell so that you know whenever I upload a new video. So, from me in Shropshire, mwah to you all and goodbye.